Hello everyone, Christy from Christy Studios. I am getting ready to paint a portrait of Jacob and Butch um, on watercolor canvas. You can see it's just three quarter watercolor canvas, 16 by 20. Um, I've already put a layer of water in the background. As you can see, it's just a thin layer of water that I just brushed on just to kind of prime the canvas and I'm gonna let that sit and soak in for a little bit before I start painting but I want to just show you the beginning stages um, this canvas is just a basic watercolor multimedia wet media canvas that I got from Hobby Lobby I prefer to work with Frederick's watercolor canvas, but we don't have a store that sells it here in Springfield, and I did not have time to order it online. So Frederick's, if you're listening, you can send me as much canvas as you want. I'm at the mall. You can find me. Anyway, uh, I just want to get this prepped. It's just a basic drawing, basic just number two pencil. I didn't go crazy. Um, so we're going to let that soak in just a little bit before I start painting. We'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to start this portrait of Jacob and Butch. And I have the picture printed out twice. I lightened it up because Butch is really super dark. Um, but with portraits, I normally start um, kind of with the eyes and just kind of work from the inside out. Um, I already know that they want um, a green background like an outdoorsy background so we'll do that in time as well so I'm just gonna start with the eyes super blue and just kind of work wet on dry pulling and adding color as I go color in there. Now working with the watercolor canvas, you can pull the color up to get that white to come back to lighten it up a little bit. So there's just a little bit of blue in there. I'm just using a cerulean for now. I will definitely be going back over it with probably a thallow and maybe an indigo to get the darker blues in the um, outer rims. But I just want to get that kind of mid-tone in there right now. Just kind of push it around a little bit. Okay, and then from here I'm just going to keep working out. So I'm going to kind of go up, you have to skip the lid here because the blue will bleed into the skin tone. So I'm going to go right above and let's use this darker picture. I'm using kind of like a Rose Modder with a little bit of um, yellow and orange. I'm just going to put some color in here real lightly and then I'm going to basically wipe it right back out. This is how I work. I put the color down and then I go back and pretty much lift it off. I'm going to add a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow. These are just colors I see to kind of get that skin tone. Now to create that shadow, I'm going to go back to my cerulean blue and pop some cerulean in here to give that eyelid shadow. Go back and pull it a little bit. So basically I'm just pushing and pulling. Let me add some more of the rose. layering and layering and layering and layering and with the canvas you can just work quickly you can layer it wipe it off layer it wipe it off and you will get some really nice results you can be real heavy-handed with the paint you can put it on real thick and dark and it won't matter you can come back and pull it if you need to pull it it's kind of fun you can use a ton of water that works. It kind of bleeds a little bit. 
the great thing about working on the watercolor canvas is that it um, doesn't buckle when you get a lot of water on it, so you can really play around with your mediums. Um, you can definitely mix your mediums up, put some acrylic, liquid acrylic. So I'm gonna put a little color under his eye. That turned purple. That's okay though. We'll go back and fix it later. So you just see, just kind of work around in sections. I'm always wiping the water off my brush. You can see me just wipe, wipe, wipe. That's all I ever do is wipe. It's how I control the amount of water that's in my brush, the amount of paint that's going down. If I don't like how much paint is going down, then I can just wipe it, come back, pull it, wipe it, wipe it, get clean, clean water. You're working in watercolor, so I'm gonna do his cheek. I'm gonna get a little bit of extra water, so I'm just gonna put some water down on his cheek, call it wet on wet. Not a ton, but a little. Grab some more of that pink, pinkish, rosy. It's kind of an earthy rose. I'm just kind of push that up. There's a piece of like a lint or something on there. That's all right. And pull it up to where his eye is. It's basically just water that I'm putting on here. Pulling the water, wiping my brush, pulling the water. So there's a little bit of color there. Gonna add a little bit of orange. A little bit of orange here. I don't want him to look like he's got jaundice or anything, so we're gonna give him some more skin tones. We're just gonna layer these colors on. There's something on this canvas too. So a little bit more of that rose. Go up to his cheeks here. Having anatomy, the understanding of anatomy always helps when you're doing portraits. So you know like where the cheekbone is, how the skin lays on your nose. So let's add a little bit more pink. I don't I think it's just a little bit too orange. So there's a good little pink. It's not gonna look that rosy, but. This will definitely fade as well, so when you are working um, with watercolor, especially on canvas, um, you will get a little bit of fading. So don't get frustrated if you put all this work into it and you thought you had the perfect color and then you come back the next day and it's all faded. Um, it's just part of the process, layering, so you can come back over it once it's dry and add another layer. Now see, I'm not liking this. Those brush strokes are going to show up. Okay, so he needs a little bit of a shadow, so I'm going to grab a little bit of phthalo and just pop a little bit of phthalo blue in along his beard line here. And that's going to help when we get ready to actually paint his hair in too. I'm just going to let that bleed in a little bit. Now right now it's pretty wet. Um, it looks kind of rosy and silly, but I guarantee that when that dries, um, it'll be nice and smooth. So I'm going to do the same thing to the forehead. I'm add a little bit of water first, just to get it wet. Grab some of my rose, a little bit of that earthy rose color, and just start with the hairline. Like there's a shadow under the hair. And pull that down. Yeah, it's all good. That's all good. Pull it over, see how it's kind of bleeding down? Perfect. Pull that over so we don't have like a harsh line. Bleed it down into what we did before. Grab a little bit of orange. Just keep the layering going. Um, you can also use a little bit of like burnt sienna if you want more of a earthier kind of rusty tone, so I can pop some burnt sienna in here, give you kind of that tan look. Um, grab a little bit more of the phthalo for the shadows. A little more shadow here. Looks like the light's shining from this direction, so we're just going to leave that white. Grab a little bit of yellow even. 
Ooh, that's not the color I wanted, but that's okay. We'll just wipe it down. Clean brush. Grab some more pink. Let's have some pink over here. So I'm going to continue painting so you can kind of watch the progression of this and then I'll slow it down once I get to another critical point. Basically you can see I'm just kind of using the wet on wet for these larger areas. Um, kind of a limited palette, just this rose color, a little bit of thalo blue, a little bit of cerulean, orange and yellow. Nothing super crazy. Um, keeping my brush clean. I have clean fresh water. Wiping the brush off in between each step. And um, just kind of let it dry and move on to the next section. If you've worked a section and you've, you're have you getting frustrated, just move on to somewhere else. Like to another cheek or move on to the dog or his ear or his shirt. Um, so that is that part there. Um, I know a lot of you had questions about hair. Now, his hair is a lot lighter than what this picture shows. So I'm going to grab a bigger brush. This is like a nice round brush, as you've probably seen in my other videos. My favorite one, duct taped. Look, it's even falling apart now. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit of burnt umber. For the darks and I'm just gonna put some like waves he's got real kind of curlyish wavy hair um, it shows like a dark brown in the picture but I know from seeing other pictures that it's more of a reddish blonde so I'm just gonna pop some I'm not gonna touch that right there see how it's wet still I'm gonna go right above it so I know that with this canvas I can go down there and um, work it later I don't have to uh, worry about any super harsh lines. So I'm just mixing orange, yellow. Ew, I don't like that color. Let's grab some sienna. I'm just gonna kind of put, it's almost like an underpainting. I just wanna get some color down. I'm just kind of, don't even be afraid to mess it up. Just push some color in there. Grab some more burnt umber. So it's a little bit darker. Got just kind of curly here and I'm not gonna worry about this because I want to put my background in first before I worry about all of his wispies I'm gonna go back oh here's the color I needed but if you look at my palette I don't know if you can see that far I've got green mixed in with my yellow it's really nasty but over here in the corner I've got a nice gold is that a what's that color Ochre, yellow ochre. That's the color I want for his hair, more of a yellow ochre. But I'm gonna just kind of fake it in a little bit here. I'm not gonna worry about these edges. I need to put that background in first, let it dry, and then go over the background because if I come up with a background now, like I do his hair all perfect, I get all these little wispies all perfect, and then you come in with the background, your background's gonna knock out all your perfect little wispies that you just created. So we're just gonna get some color in here to get it going. And then I can come back and add detail. And just put some color in here. I'm gonna grab some more brown, a little sienna, just to get that color in there. You can almost see the three, the three colors, tritone, and then kind of pull it, wipe in my brush. Get that color down in there. Burnt umber and burnt sienna. I'm going crazy now. Now this is wet on dry. Just getting some color in. I don't want to get any detail going right now because I still have to do all this skin in here. But I'm just wet, clean brush, no paint on it, and just pulling some of these edges to soften them up a little bit. Same here, I just want to soften these edges. Soften these edges, kind of do a little bit of a blend on that skin, but not anything crazy. Might pull some more sienna in here. Just to 
like it. Let's start that little merge of the hairs with the skin. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry and eventually we'll come back and we'll add you know, your little curls and highlights. And the great thing again about the watercolor canvas is that you can come back and lift. See how that paint is just lifting right off? Clean your brush and lift it right off and you can get great highlights and um, lifting. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do a little fast forward and get a lot of this painted and then I will come back and check in with you. And no. Okay, so this ought to be fun. I'm going to quickly show you how to do human eyes, dog eyes. You can see that I've already got the base color put in, his blue and his brown. Um, so let's just start with the pup. So I've already got brown in here and just real simple drawing. And I don't if you can see, he's got kind of a squinty little face. Um, so with his brown eyes, uh, the paint is already dry. I'm sorry if I'm talking fast. I am trying to do this without anyone walking in on me. <laughs> sorry. So we're going to kind of just imagine that this is a ball. And with the watercolor canvas, you can lift. So what I'm putting down is going to lift some of that brown that I already have down. So I want to kind of reshape his eye just a tad bit to get that ball shape and I'm not going to worry about this white that I left there because I can go back and pull it that was just for my own like visual so I'm just using like um, a burnt umber it's just a real earthy brown and I'm kind of just going over what I'd already done in here so with the dogs they pretty much just have a brown eyeball not there's no white usually showing there might be a little bit of white down in here in this, that little uh, corner, but his eyes are so dark. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix in some purple, sorry, with my runny nose, and some dark blue to get these even darker darks. So if you can imagine the pupil just right in the center there, starting at the very top of the lid and going right down to the bottom line. I'm going to start right up here and just kind of draw a little half circle, a little half moon. And then I'm going to go back with that same dark purple, dark blue, and add this top eyelid shadow. It's almost black. It's just so dark. And you see I'm just kind of dragging that across, giving them this little extra shadow. And I'm going to fill in that eye with that dark blue. But I'm still going to leave this little brown spot here and this isn't the best brush either. So I'm going to do that on the other side too. A little purple, a little, it's like indigo blue. I'm going to do the top lid here, just the shadow. And then I'm going to go down into the corner and then I'm going to pull that around where that like round eyeball is. See how I went round? And then I'm going to finish in the pupil. Go all the way to the top. I'm just kind of I'm just kind of poking it in there I'm not really drawing it so you can see it filled in and now I'm just gonna go back and fill that in there now I did leave a little bit of white what I'm gonna do is with a clean brush just wet clean brush I'm gonna pull these edges in just to darken that little white spot a little bit and give that shadow some more it's gonna fill in that's fine I'm going to leave the edges, let that dry. I'm going to go over here and do this eye the same way. A little bit of indigo, a little bit of purple. So I'm going to find his pupil, like right in here. There's kind of a glare on his eye, but that's fine. Grab a little bit more blue. 
you find that top line, that top lid shadow and pull it down just following the shape in the photograph. There's a little bit of a crease there. It's got this nice squinty smile. A little bit more blue. Follow the top lid down. It doesn't have to be perfect either because it's not like a straight line. And I got some more purple. Go back to the pupil. I want to darken up this middle here a little bit. Pull from the top down all the way down to the bottom where that bottom eyelid, eyelid is. <laughs> darken that up a little bit, some more blue, and then pull that bottom lid over and fill that in. And it looks a little pointy, so I'm just going to kind of Okay, it now. I think it's a little too purpley over here, so I'm actually going to grab some black. <laughs> just a hint of black. Just to darken it up. And it's okay if I just, oh shoot, I just covered up his whole eyeball. Now I can't see. But you know what? I can go back with a clean brush. But actually, I'm going to go back with a little bit of brown. Of an orange, of, like a burnt sienna. It's more of a rust color. I'm just going to poke that right in over the top again. I'm going to fill that all in. Okay, so now it looks like he's totally filled in. I'm taking a clean brush, pretty dry. I wiped all the water off it, and I'm going to pull and dry it off. And I'm just going to pull. See how that pulls right up? Isn't that nice? I love watercolor canvas. It's what the joy of this is. So you can pull that up and give him more of a, a little bit of a glow. I'm going to come over here and just do that too to this little white spot. Just kind of feather it a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to let those dry. I will come back and clean up this eye a little bit because he still doesn't really have much of a pupil, but I want that to dry. With the watercolor canvas, it will bleed a lot more than paper because it's not absorbing the paint so much. It's just sitting on top. So for the human, so I've got the blue already in there and that's already dry. I'm going to basically do the same thing. I'm going to go across the top of the lid. I'm going to grab a dark brown and just draw the top of this lid in. There is usually no rhyme or reason or no school of thought for the reason why I'm doing this. It's just how I paint. Um, the white of the eye here is not actually white. I'm going to put a little bit of a pink, just, I don't want him to look like he has pink eye, just a touch of pink. I'm going to dry off my brush and pull it. And then I'm going to put a hint of phthalo blue in there, just to kind of create a bit of a shadow in this corner. And then I'm going to pull it again with a clean, dry brush. So I'm going to get this lid in here. I'm going to grab a little bit of pink, rose mater, give him a little shadow here, and this is that eyelid shadow. Dry off my brush, pull some of that color off, grab some more rose mater, make it in there and get that crease a little bit darker. A little bit of shadow. Just bring that shadow down, clean my brush, wipe it with a clean brush, wipe again, and I'm going to do the bottom. I've already got pink. What I've done before, that's dry. I'm going to hit a little bit of yellow just to kind of make it more of an earth tone so he's not super pink. A little bit of orange. And these are just ways of layering these colors. Now you can see there's a watermark from where I was working before. With this watercolor canvas, you can just come back with a clean, wet brush and you can just kind of pull those little areas out. And the fun thing is it'll create new watermarks, so you don't really know where they're going to happen, but you can always go back and just kind of erase them with a little clean brush. And then grab a little bit of phthalo blue. Make him a little bit of a shadow right here. 
I don't want to make it too dark of a shadow, but definitely the human skin has that blue hue. And I'm going to pull that blue up into the shadow as well. Got to have your lights and darks. And give this a little bit more of a shadow in here. A little more shadow. So we're just kind of working on our layers. Knock that little bar mark out. Actually, I'm just going to grab some more pink and just pull that out. It actually looks cool. Look at that dry mark. Pull that down just from the top, right under the brow, and pulling it with a clean brush. Okay, so let's go back to the eye. I'm going to grab some dark brown. And you can see I'm just kind of working all around. It's got eyelashes. But I'm not going to sit here and draw every little tiny eyelash right now. I'm just going to put in that color to get that dark value in there. It's actually more prevalent right here. And I am still not wanting to draw those actual lashes in yet because I might want to go back in and mess around with that eyelid. So I just want to get this dark line in here so you can see the beginnings of these shadows. Now let's give him his darks. Let's pop that pupil in there. It's outside so his pupils are going to be small. And then I'm going to darken up the lid, darken up the lash, just a hint. Because this is all wet still, so that I'll bleed right in, and I'm barely touching it. Go in with a dry brush, and I'm going to pull it this way. Just a tiny bit, just so it's not a line. It kind of pulls it off and away from his eye, almost like eyelashes would. So, this looks a little dark to me. I look, uh, I'm going to grab some dark, some blue, <laughs> kind of a thalo, like a dirty thalo, it's already got some black on it, my palette's pretty dirty. I'm going to pull this down, I want this to be in the shadow here, and I want the shadow up here, and I'm going to darken that. Clean your brush, I'm going to grab some, what do I want to grab? Some cerulean. Go back in and darken this. And I am really just using the very few hairs left on this brush. Clean your brush and then I'm going to go back and just barely hit it. And just kind of give it, you know how I, irises have that like striation, like little, little lines. This needs a little dark pop right here. It's okay to sit here and just, you know, you don't have to use brush strokes. I'm just barely like tch, 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 popping it. Hmm. Let's see, something's still bothering me. Because that's bottom lip, bottom eyelid. It's darkened up. It's always good to just step back in the way and look at it. Or sometimes it's even nice to take a picture of it and look at it on your cell phone and see what jumps out at you and bothers you. Um, if there's something that, you know, like the eyelid's definitely way too dark or there's too much orange there, you can usually see it on a, like a cell phone picture. And one of my friends, um, she does really large abstract paintings um, uses a mirror on the other side of the room Mary you know who you are um, so that way it gives her just a different perspective and a different eye and you can see things that maybe you don't see because you're s sitting on top of your painting for so long okay that was just a little orange I feel like it needs to be just a little bit darker in here. I know this is getting kind of wet because I'm working it a little bit. So I'm about ready just to step away from the eye for a minute. 
I know it's not done, but I don't want it to start getting murky looking either. So I'm gonna move over. Maybe I'll just do his eyebrow. Grab a little bit of burnt umber. And just I'm gonna lightly put that in there. Clean brush. Wiping it off. Just a clean brush. Wiping it off. I swear I do more, I wipe paint off more than I put it on. Alright, so we're getting there. Back here, Mr. Pup. This is drying up now. I'm going to go back in and just add a little bit of purple for this eyelid just to give it a little bit of color. I didn't want it to be white. I didn't want it to be black. You see how that just warmed up? Just kind of push that paint around a little bit. A little bit more purple. Push it around a little bit. Now I'm grabbing some fallow blue. Barely came off my brush. Got a little bit more. Ah. A little bit more. It's not came off my brush. I don't want it to. Frustrations. I'm gonna grab a little black. shadows. Just fill that in so I can wipe it off again. There we go. I'm just going to finish this guy. Just clean brush. I'm just going to pull this in. come back and rework these once they're dry again. I just wanted to clean, the, clean up those eyes. Basically I'm just using a wet brush with no paint on it and just pulling the paint. So it pulls right off. And I'll come back and do this like all over the painting once I have all my colors down. I'll spend more time pulling paint creating these highlights. But it's so cool when it dries it's all nice and blended. Alright, well I'm going to keep painting. And I didn't even video. So cool. See ya.